Hi, this is Clint, and today we're building a cutting board. All right, so let's jump right in. As you can see here, I'm joining the board first, uh, so I can get a straight square edge uh, on one edge of the board. Uh, so I join all the boards that I'm going to use to cut into strips. After I join it, I plane it, uh, which allows me to get two flat um, faces of the board. Once we get done planing and joining and all that good stuff, we move over here to the table saw. We set it uh, and the first edge that we run against that table saw is the joined edge and then from there all the cuts are straight. So I get all of my thick strips cut. For that, I got to make my two decorative uh, white oak strips. So I cut those on the table saw and then I actually plane those down to about an eighth of an inch thick. After that, lay them all out on my clamps. This is where things get fun and messy. Uh, lay it all out and get really, really generous with the glue. Uh, we like to use an old paintbrush and just spread all that glue out. Uh, then once that's done, clamp it up and as you can see, I'm standing on the cutting board actually with a three by three post. To just press it all down flat when I actually tighten the clamp. Once this is done, go back, tighten them all again, and then I wash it off with some water and a rag and um, just really get in there and get all that glue off one side if at all possible. It'll make your life easier later when you're running it through the planer as a finished piece. Now right here I'm actually unclamping a smaller glue up that I did of the same board. Um, typically we like to run a six foot uh, or eight foot length through the planer. But in this case, I was running the first one, the prototype of this board through the planer, as you can see. It comes out all nice and clean on the other side. All that glue gets planed off. One of my favorite parts in the process. Right here, I'm just cutting the board down to size. As you can see, I'm, I'm working with the prototype still. Um, when I cut the six foot board down to three, uh, cutting boards actually have help uh, taking it through the table saw because it's so big um, that it's kind of hard to con control. As you can see, it got a little off cut there. It's a little, looks like a downtown cityscape. As they say, measure twice, cut once. I'm standing here talking to Britt Duke. Uh, he's always good at giving me um, his thoughts on dimensions. And, and now I gotta cut out the handles of this board. It's a massive board. Usually our boards don't have handles, but this one's so big that you really need some help picking it up. So I'm making the all important jig. A carpenter's shop is usually filled with thousands of jigs. Uh, and this is yet another one that we will uh, add to our jig collection. Uh, but this jig will allow me to uh, cut consistent handles in this board and any board uh, following it. Now, full disclosure, this is the prototype of the jig. Ultimately, what will probably happen is we'll take this idea, we might even use metal in making the next jig. Um, we might still use wood, but we just want something that's going to be consistent every single time. This work can also be very time consuming, uh, but if you put in the work and make it just right, uh, it really helps you in the long run because you're able to do things a lot quicker. Now you can see I actually end up using a piece of plywood for the top of that jig, not the one by four like I originally thought because it was too thick. But that's part of woodworking, it's just the process. You keep kind of going trial and error style until you get it right. So I've got my plunger router here attached to my jig and that jig is going to set right on top of the end of that cutting board and I've got stops on both ends of the jig and I've already set the depth on my plunge router. Uh, I know that the deepest it will go is the deepest I want to go so I just run back and forth with the router and the stops on my jig allow me not to go too far and once I'm done the handles are gone. A little branding here personalize the board, one of my favorite parts. Not necessarily the actual branding, but once it's sanded uh, and then uh, the oil is wiped on, those brands really come alive. So right here I'm just doing the sanding. 
Um, that you got to do, we start with 120 and usually end with 220 on our boards and uh, 220 grit. And then we apply the oil. This is so therapeutic. It just takes that dry wood and brings all the life out. And as you can see, the brands, like I said, they just kind of come to life and they pop once you get that oil in there. And that's it. That's how we make a cutting board right here at Harp Design Co. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Harp Design Co. And we will keep posting more and more. Thanks so much.